I don't think police officers should have their phones available to them when they're on duty. Why do you think that? Because I'm sick of seeing these guys buried in their damn phones when one hand they got they got an iPhone, the other hand they got a freaking M4. Just not, it's just why, like why? Why is that okay? Why is that a thing? You think it's contributing to deaths or no, something? No, just saying. People not paying attention. He's on Instagram and he's not stopping the guy, you know, committing a, a, a potentially terrible crime. The last time we talked, I'm about- not one of those guys who like thinks we're all, you know, I'm not a fear monger and I'm not scared that you know there's terrorists everywhere. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. We, they're there not... Oh, I spit on you. I'm so, this that, is how angry you are. You got, that, that, was, that was some hang time on that, that was, saliva that landed on that my disgusting. laptop. Now I'm going to ask for a new laptop. So uh, good, good for me. The, anyway. I, I, I ride through two significant sort of New York City arteries, okay, a lot. Uh, and I see these guys, and they're in, like, the military fatigues. Mm-hmm. And they're holding on to, like, hardcore automatic rifles but they're like swiping through their phones, man. Sometimes they're huddled up in like a group of a gaggle, of like nine of them, and they're just on their phones. And I, do you think I'm crazy? I don't. I think it's just normal human behavior at this point, right? No, Everybody's no, no. staring at their stuff. No, no. But they're on duty, man. They're on duty. They're supposed to be protecting and serving. You're telling me they wouldn't notice some some shit like happening right around them, dude? Yes, I am telling Are you. Are you saying that they're gonna be like, well, oh? I think that guy's having a heart attack. Uh, I'm going to tweet it. Like, what do you think they're going to do? If I'm a guy not trying to be seen, I will use the fact that his face is buried into his phone to my advantage. And I will slide through because I'm a slippery shit. So you think that, so so you're going to start taking advantage of this by doing what? You're going to start taking things like maybe their hats, their guns. What do you want to do? I cannot believe you're not taking me seriously. I am not freaked out about it. I just don't think... Probably because when I'm in Grand Central, right? It's like, not even about the terrorist thing. There's like a thing. thousand cops. It's not so even like, the terrorist if thing. If 20% of them are on their phone, there's still 80% of them that are not. That's not cool. Like, why Why did? Why do they have to have their phones on them when they're on duty? Every, They've got radios. That's, every that's better. Every freaking occupation like, has slack, slackers, when the, man. When the bomb goes off, the radios are still going to work. I think you're anti-union. That's your problem. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mark Lassay is here today. Mark, do you, What's do you going see on? any any validity in what I'm preaching here, man? I actually totally agree with you. I Thank feel like you. just like the way it's unacceptable to have your phone out in school, like there's an environment to have your phone out, and there should be some sort of mandate where you should not just be able to play around with your phone. Well, you guys are presuming that this isn't allowed. I'm th- thinking it's not. Oh, I, I just don't think there's No, you're just saying that that's the way it. it should be. No, not the way it should be. That's just the way it is. Like fighting reality, and that's crazy. okay. That that that's the, the no, way it is. Not that's okay. okay. A lot of stupid stuff is around. It, that's not okay. It's not okay. I firmly believe, and I would love to see this be made a law. Police officers, while on duty, may look it up. Maybe it is it. whilst on duty, <laughs> should not their phones should be in their locker at the station. I'm just I'm looking at the autocomplete. Can police dog smell Molly? Can police ask for ID? Can police track a phone? Can police take your car? Can police search your bag? Wait a minute. I haven't finished. The second one was, can police dogs smell Molly? Well, that's the first one. I haven't finished typing anything. I don't think they can detect that. Anyway, so can police. I would be impressed if a dog could sniff out ecstasy like that. All right. But but I really, truly, like, and I'm starting to see it. And I almost, I know if I said something, I'd probably wind up behind bars. But I, like, want to say something. And it's, it's, it's every last little, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, like muscle in my body is 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 just twitching at the chance to be like, hey, dude, maybe you stop liking shit on Instagram and patrol a little bit with your freaking semi-automatic rifle slung over your arm. I get it, but come on. Why are you on your phone? You leave the phone in the locker in the police department in the station when you're on duty and people are going to be like, well, what if they need it in a case of an emergency? No, they've got a radio. And the radio's uber reliable, right? Uh, not according to this guy. This is like police magazine, police oh. law enforcement magazine, and technology what? section saying that sometimes the radio is weak, signal can be a problem. They go to phones, but they also use their, their cameras for crime scene photos and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, well, so that, it might not, they might not be Instagramming. They might be sending an image back to headquarters. Well, then, then they should get a police issued phone that can only take a photo. Or whatever the hell it is. I, I, I don't know the inner workings of the cops. I'm kind of pissed off that you don't really like, 
you're not taking it as serious as I'm taking it. The stuff that annoy me, the things that annoy me. I'm not gonna get angry at the people who have the guns right now. You see, but, but you can. You get, know how often you get I've angry had, at them in your head. You don't have to like. Oh yeah, but I'm also I'm not gonna like. Hey, by the way, when you see me in Grand Central. Make sure that you know I'm pissed with you. The next time you're walking through New York City and you see a police officer on their phone dicking around, mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to feel it. I can ask them. Ask I'm going to ask like, yeah, be like, I will oh, ask next time. Excuse me, uh, officer. Do you mind if I record Are you supposed me? to be texting you're, while you're on duty? I'll tell you what. When I go in, to gr- in, in Times Square? Oh, I'm not going to do it in Times Square. I'm gonna, I, I can't stand the regular people there. Well, Please, the cops stay stand still. That's what I'm saying. I want to hear what people. I want. I'm sure we have police officers. I don't know if we have any NYPD uh, listening to the show. Uh, if we do, uh, I'm sorry if I offended you, but that's how I feel. Tell me what you think. Um, we got to get going. It's Wednesday, October eighth. Let's start the show. You're either uh, you're, you're with me or you're against me, I am. That's right. I'm against you. Welcome to the 404 program. I'm Jeff Bacalar, joined by the cop lover, Ayaz Akhtar. Cop lover. That's me. Ugh, being labeled as a cop lover is like such a derogatory statement, isn't it? These right days? now it is. Mark Lasea over there on the, uh, on the board, rocking the switching and the boarding and the mixing and the beard and the mustache. What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on? How are you? I am so great. How are you guys? I'm much better that I got a flu shot. How do you how do you like this room? I, mean, I guess the construction is not too bad right now, but compared to how you've been doing it the last two days, this is the first week that you've done a show over Skype, or you guys started doing that last week. No, no, we said Monday was the first show mm-hmm. over Skype. I'm actually really curious. I want to hear what people think. We had a couple emails come in uh, saying that it wasn't that bad. What do you think, <laughs> man? I haven't watched it back or anything. I don't know. I haven't watched it back either, but I'm talking about like the experience in doing it. I mean, it feels kind of the same. In it some, does. In some respects, other than like lighting. Right. And lighting but, and like instantaneous sort of feedback. There's and less I lag. I can't spit on your computer from my Not house in Not yet, Humble. anyway. There's less lag when it comes to spit. You're right. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to, to hear what everyone thinks about that. Uh, today, I had to be in the city, so we're doing a show uh, in the crap studio here. It's not crap. I'm sorry. Studio's not. It's not crap. I'm in okay. like, uh, I feel bad. It's not it's, crap. It's mom. not great it's not because great. of noise. I don't know. I just don't want to like. Dust that we're breathing in, but it's, you know, it's it's workable. Yeah, I don't want to like preface it with like crap. It's not crap. It's just not optimal. Um, so we'll do a show here today, obviously. And then uh, tomorrow, I think we'll do a show here again. If Wonderful. that works for you. Yeah, it depends on the timing. Okay. We'll make it work. We shall make it work. We've only got a few stories in the rundown today. Um, so we're going to get to them in just a second. Um, I want everyone to uh, pay attention because tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be able to figure out the flux capacitor thing. I felt so bad. I, I, I showed it last week. I teased everyone because it's such a rad thing. It's a giveaway. It's not actually figured. You haven't figured it out. No, no, no. I'm not, I didn't like slip on my bathtub and hit my head and figure no, out the flux. The toilet. Flux capacitor. Where's your credibility? I know. It was the toilet. Yeah. The porcelain was wet. Yeah. And I slipped. Bathtub. And I had an idea. I don't know this. anything about Ghostbusters, but I know Back to the Future. Have you, uh, have, speaking of Ghostbusters, have you had a chance to try out the donut? The donut? I have not tried out the donut yet. I don't know where there's a Krispy Kreme in the general area here. Is it Krispy Kreme or is it Dunkin'? It's Krispy Kreme. I think I there's one no in Herald Square. I'm not going out of my way for this. Yeah, Wait, what sure. donut? So, Ghostbusters 30th uh, anniversary. Oh, there's a Ghostbusters donut. There's two. There's a Ghostbusters logo. And it's just like the exact same kind of donut, except the frosting's green. You got it it's pulled up, up here. He's pulling it up, coming Mark, up. if you want to take a look at it. Um, Somewhere. So I think it was at the top. So, yeah, there it Thank is. You. So, there's the Ghostbusters. Uh, so, they have like the logo one. We've oh, talked looks, about this. That looks cute. It looks good. It looks tasty. And a Stay Puff one, which is equally as adorable. I'm thinking of the Dunkin' Donuts Halloween one. You seen that one that was all messed up on Reddit? Oh, yeah. The That's Reddit where thing. I'll get my donut information crossed in my head. Yeah, you got to get So do donut. you guys partake in these donuts? I'm going to partake in the shit out of that donut. I, yeah. think. It looks good. I usually feel worse after a donut. I, I, I uh, always make a point to get the heart-shaped donuts during Valentine's Day just because I like that they're shaped like hearts. Is that cool? No. It's the exact same reason as it, but reasoning behind getting a Ghostbusters donut. Yeah, it looks cool. I don't know. Ghostbusters only turns 30 once. Valentine's Day is every freaking February. Oh, they only do? Okay. Yeah. I think you're wrong. I think you're just straight up wrong. What's Why? Because I like a heart-shaped donut? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty lame, man. I like heart-shaped It's just donuts. the shape. That's it? That's it. 
<laughs> it's pink too, right? Yeah, it's pink. Oh, give me a break. Moving along, man, I'm hungry. Don't get so decide. angry about the weirdest things, man. Like I know. Heart-shaped donuts. And Weird. Cops. Piss me off. Cops and if donuts. A cop, if a cop cops and donuts. If a cop was having a heart-shaped donut while texting, you would like just lose My head would it. Explode. Wait, can, can we pull up a heart-shaped donut real quick, just I'm, just to confirm that Jeff would not eat it? No, I would. I've, I've got never lots met of look, at, look at all those heart-shaped donuts. Does that not appeal oh to you more God. than a regular that donut? That is appealing, right? No, I would eat There's it. There's something about the heart-shaped donut, like you don't get that regularly, that makes you want it even more. I think they're more like bite-friendly. I know. Yes, they are. Okay. They because seem to be. You can bite off the lobes. Yeah, you get you get those two humps at mm-hmm. the top. Uh huh. Get that in your mouth. I've converted you. Look how much better they fit in the box too, right here. Ah, yeah. Look at that. It's just like it well, was. Well, look, meant I to stand be. corrected, kids. That's, I think that's what we're learning. We stand corrected when it comes to heart-shaped donuts. Can we all, three like of us donuts. together, holding hands, go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a heart-shaped donut and feed Absolutely. each other? I know what we're doing after this. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, right, what? They don't have them right now. We're gonna, no, yeah, you are we going to request them to do you that? We can, let's just, we're going to walk there and request, hey, could you just make us some special donuts? Yeah, right why would they, they don't have those heart molds in October. I'm sure they have them just like You're in right. the cupboard with a little bit of dust. They just need to rinse off in the, in the sink. <laughs> Where are we going with this freaking show today? Yeah, I just don't know. I'm just hungry again. Um, so okay. anyway, I, I have a meeting. I, I, I shit you not. I have a meeting today to discuss how we're legally allowed to give away the flux capacitors. That sounds like it'll be lots of fun. Yeah, I know. And that like not at all kind of way. No, you're totally right. It's going to suck. It's going to suck hard. Um, yes. So stay tuned for that. Tomorrow, hopefully, I'll announce how we can do this. Also, I want to tease something else. Uh, Sideshow, the the toy company, Mm -hmm. we're working with those guys, and we're going to be able to offer a contest happening very soon that you are somehow going to try and fix. I'm not eligible. You're not eligible. But I know people who are. We're giving away like the Batman and Alfred uh, Batman Armory. Yeah, it's pretty badass. So that's just a little tease. I can't talk about the details just yet, but that will be happening uh, in conjunction with our friends over at Sideshow Collectibles. Okay, moving along. First story of the day is about news. It's news about news. News is bad for you. And uh, a new study out discovers that giving up reading news actually make you a happier person, the very thing that you're constantly in search for. No. Happiness. Yeah, the happiness aspect. Yeah, it's yeah. good to see that somebody thinks that news will make you feel miserable. Uh, the Guardian published an excerpt from a book. Uh, it's called The Art of Thinking, Clearly Better Thinking and Better Decisions. And this guy who wrote this book and this, this, this excerpt here, for four years he's gone without news. Okay? <laughs> he does not listen to the news, does not watch the news. And he has a bunch of so reasons. So no internet either? No, no, no. It's not that he doesn't read. He doesn't read the news. Okay? So it's a little different. How do you separate the two? Okay, so like you're talking about like bite-sized news, like local news. If you're going to watch a television program, you wouldn't be watching the news. So that would be an example of that. If you're going online, you're not going to like the Times or the Guardian. I guess. Gotcha. So theoretically, he doesn't see this either. Right, he has no idea someone wrote something. He's got it. no idea it was stolen. Maybe the Guardian just took it and he doesn't even know. Yeah. Uh, this all isn't news though, right? I mean, isn't it sort of been known for a while that just watching like local news and that sort of stuff is is not conducive to being... In a chipper mood all the time. You're exactly right. Because like yeah. one of his points was news is toxic to your body. Totally. So the idea is you listen to news, you get all antsy, and like it triggers uh, cortisol, which makes you like angrier, and it makes you fatter. So it's way more fun for you that way. You've got no, uh, you've got inhibits thinking because you're getting all these ideas. It's being thrown dictated. at you. Yeah. Thrown at you, and you're not being able to concentrate because you're watching the news and they're like coming up in five minutes. We'll be talking about sports, but let's talk about this thing right now. And then boom, somebody's dead on the in a boat. We'll talk about that in ten minutes. So you can't think. But this idea of not getting the news, could you live without news? Totally. Mm-hmm. Now, does I have to ask questions. Like, what are the rules here? Does Twitter right. count? Well, it's, I don't think you could do Twitter. Because you I mean, follow, if you've got breaking news. It depends you, on who you're following. Right, because I follow, like, I follow breaking news, and I follow the Times, and I follow a few other news outlets. So I guess you couldn't do that, no. So I couldn't do it. He's saying that society needs journalism. That's still fine. Investigative journalism is relevant. He wants people to read like long-form articles. Books are good, obviously, since he's an author. But the news part, because you get so much crap and so little of it is it's relevant. It's misleading, yeah. Like that's another thing. Like, do, do you feel better for knowing the news? 
Like no one's going on all the time? Well, it's, I think the the reasoning for people consuming news has changed, right? Where like news is now pop culture, whereas before, because like that's, I, I truly believe like news is all about ratings now, right? Yeah. So they've turned it into this pop culture sort of thing where they they almost sensationalize everything to the point where it's like entertainment. Right. Yeah, but that means it's more garbage, right? So that's right, like you're not the, getting like they like all the new all the twenty four hour news guys. They love this Ebola shit. They want everyone to get it. They can't. They hope every single. They hope a kid gets it. They hope everyone gets it. It's a better story. It's a better story. It's 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 more terrifying, which means more people are going to watch. They don't care about the health of these people. They want to. They want to see people with Ebola, and they want everyone to freak out about it. They really. Well, if you th- I, and if you think I'm wrong, you're out of your mind. I think if there was any sensationalistic thing, something that got people interested, if for some reason, like, uh, people petting kittens was, like, the thing that everyone wanted to see, they'd want that, too. Not, like, Ebola necessarily. Is I the, mean, that's the way it's evolved. Goal of journalism. That, look, dude, you're, you're telling me, like, you're saying they don't want people to get... They do I don't it. think they give a damn what the news is as long as it gets ratings. So, like, if there was a thing that we all agreed on, this we're is like... This hot. This is... This exactly. Is, I'm just saying, like, dude. I don't think infectious diseases necessarily is what... This is the dumbest statement ever made. I'm qualifying this, too. <laughs> George Carlin said it the best. These terrifying moments, they get eaten up by the news outlets. Mm-hmm. They, they love it. It's entertaining for them, and they love it. I'm okay. telling you. As a human. No one's going to come out and say that. No one's going to be, like, Rupert Murdoch's not going to be like, yes, we hope everyone gets this disease. And in front of the treadmill at the gym I go to is a bunch of news stations. And the one that's always empty and the one I accidentally go to more times than not, Fox News is right in front of me. Mm-hmm. And it drives me freaking crazy because I can read it. You can't change the channel. Oh, it's like literally their building. Yeah. Oh. So it's just like, okay, I'm going to start running outside again because <laughs> I can't, I don't want to read, I don't want to know this stuff's happening, first of all. Yeah. It comes to the news gathering. I'm not a news junkie, okay? Like as much as like I have to do my job, I have to pay attention to the news. But yeah. like when I'm off, man, I'm off. Yeah. I don't know what the hell's going on. I hear you. Thanks to Twitter trends, I ha- I'm like kind of forced to know what the hell's happening. Like a little bit. Why is this trending? Are you dead? Oh, you're not dead. Okay, good. Now next thing, because I am yeah. trying to be a better person. But no news. That would be an interesting thing. Like no news today. I don't want to know. Uh, when I go away. On vacation, I kind of make it my business. When I was away, and I didn't even leave, I didn't leave the state. I was at the Jersey Shore, and I did not read news for five days, and it was this amazing, cathartic experience, and I just felt great. It's like taking your brain and using it for other stuff. Yeah, like I was creative again. That was something he said, that news kills creativity. Yeah, to- oh, Totally. Totally. Is that why you came back with all of those paintings? And like so many ideas about and the, the world. crocheted quilts everywhere. I had like new theories on quantum physics and whatnot. And Afghans. And Afghans. Just everywhere, man. They're all over this construction Yo, man, place. I got some theories about those Afghans. You figured out a more efficient way to make them. Hell yeah. Um, all right, moving along. Very interesting story. I want to hear what everyone has to say about that. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this kind of joke story by now. Uh, it's about a house in Detroit. And trading it in for a tablet. Well, he just wants to get an iPhone 6 for it at this point. Oh, he now, wants an iPhone. The, so you probably heard the story already. A guy's trying to get rid of his, his house. Wait, scroll down a little bit? No. <laughs> Do you, are you reading along with us? No, I just want to show a picture of the house. That's the house. That's, that's what I want to talk about. This idea is like, is this house worth as much as an iPhone? Because this guy bought it for like 41000 A guy, it's when? always... What year? This is a, a couple of years ago. He bought it for, from a guy who bought it for... Uh, he bought it in 2010. Okay. Forty-one thousand. The guy before him bought it for ten thousand five hundred and flipped it to him. Okay. If you can flip a house in Detroit, good for you. He's never lived there. The owner, yeah. current owner. Okay, and he has got some uh, six thousand dollars worth of back taxes on it. This place has been abandoned for years. It's got no front door. Windows are gone. So, I know Jeff, you're not the biggest iPhone guy. Is this house, in particular, worth an iPhone or any phone? It's got no. no door. It's in Detroit too. So like, it's. I mean, I I hate to say this, but the hassle and the headache that comes along with what's all that would likely is owning that house. It's not worth anything. So you think this guy is worth gonna nothing? He's gonna be stuck with this thing forever. I mean, I burn it down. I, you know, like real estate in Detroit. It's not. It's not great. 
it's not a great place to own something. An iPhone goes for about what eight hundred dollars unlocked. Yeah. Okay. Is this house worth even eight hundred dollars? I don't. You're saying it's not. I. I. It is. No, you don't think not. it is? No, man. You're right. You're totally right. But the property thi- taxes, the back taxes. Right. But the- what I'm saying is, it's not. But it's not worth it. Physically, yes. The bricks and all, like the the land. Okay, you could you maybe could, yeah. The you land could scrape give, out like eight hundred bucks think, out of I that. Think, yeah. But what I'm saying is the headache and the accompanying disaster of a time it must be that goes along with owning something like that is not worth it. <laughs> if the iPhone six is too rich, he's also willing to accept a thirty two gigabyte iPad. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> no word. That's how bad it's gotten in Detroit. <laughs> no word if you'll accept an Android device. That's how bad it's gotten there, man. I don't. Man, Do you I, know anyone that lives uh, in Detroit still? I know like two people. So wait, are the are the the neighboring houses also bordered? Because if you looked at the house to the right, it almost looks like it's boarded up it too. It appears right? to be boarded yeah, up as well. It's not exactly the the street it's you want to ride your bike on. Yeah, I you know I don't want to yeah, make. Robocop was right, man. Yeah, I don't. Robocop's want, always been right about Detroit. This was gonna happen. And then what's going on in the house to the left? There's like something leaning up against the house that it looks. It's a coffin. Oh, this year? <laughs> it's a coffin. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but look, everyone knows that, like, you we know. need to send a drone. I, I hate, yeah, seriously. But there's, I like, hate. a pretty little bow at, 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 the, uh, at the front of the house in the yard. There's, like, a nice white bow. I think you're trying to, I, no, I think that's a chalk outline. <laughs> no, 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 in front, of the, in front of the said house that we're talking this about. Yeah, 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 yeah. if you zoom out, there's, like, a That's a not pretty, a bow, that's garbage. There's a, oh, I thought it was a bow. This thing here? <laughs> such a dumb That's the way they sold this, exactly. If they just put a I bow thought, on it. That's the white flag the house just is trying signaling to like because it. it gives up. <laughs> That's the surrender flag. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I just, yeah. I, it's, I, I, it's really a sad story. Like, you know, you can make the jokes about, is. you know, how awful some places in Detroit are outside Detroit is. And then, you sw- and then you spin it with the whole iPhone sort of angle. But it really is freaking sad, man. Dude, it, it happens everywhere. This, That's That's the case where, with, with my uh, parents' house. Oh, in Vegas? Yeah, they they we I mean they moved there twenty years ago, and it was an okay neighborhood. And it was it's just, just okay twenty years ago. It was okay, okay, and now it is terrible, quite bad. And what did you a house do? Across from uh, Jeez. where we live, and you left, and the town went to shit. You shouldn't have left. No, no, no. It was it, it went to shit far far before I I had oh, left. Sorry. But um, yeah, it's the house insane. across from us has been condemned for. Man, like 15 years. And it's, it's been just, condemned? Are there like uh, squatters in there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Jesus. It's terrible. And the guy that lived there was so meticulous about his lawn. He would always water his lawn. He had like the nicest lawn. And then after, he unfortunately passed away and his entire property just went to shit. It's oh. terrible. This is Gran Torino. Yeah. Uh, it's partially God. Gran Torino. It is, dude. Isn't that supposed to be, wasn't that shot in Detroit? It's based on true events. You know, it's it's sad. I'm trying to think if I've ever lived in a place that was really bad. I where I lived in Baltimore for four years was not awesome. You know, Baltimore's not the greatest place in the world. I haven't I haven't lived there or anything, so I can't say anything particular about it. Some Although I'm talking nice. shit about Detroit, never never been there. So what am I? It's easy to to talk. It's just too easy about Detroit. There's not enough RoboCop movies. About Detroit, it's, you know, and I and like I said, I have friends who who are from there. I have friends who still live there, and you know, they're they'll be the first to admit things are not very good. Um, okay, we'll finish up today with uh, an interesting piece from this website called The Verge, and it's about um, this guy who rode an electric unicycle through Manhattan, and he says it felt like the future. Well, of course, we know on the four hundred four, the future sucks. So what? Is this guy saying that's different from that mentality? Pretty much nothing. You'd be right then, because yeah. he said this, this, is terrible. this device itself is like 26 pounds and like it self balances. You can see it in the video. There he goes on it. <laughs> Man, do you know how many people stopped reading this story after the first sentence? First sentence reads, "I commute to work every day using a skateboard," and people are like effing hipster, and they just turn it off. They just Apple V that, uh, Apple W. What, what were you gonna say? I don't remember. Anyway, so the guy's <laughs> doing. <laughs> I'm just watching that video. I was like, you know what? I, the, the city of the future stuff always made me intrigued. You know, the Segway when that thing came of course. out. Or like hover, like the hoverboard was that in Back to the Future. And they lied Min- to us on minor- TV. Minority Report. Everything seems cool. In the future. V- any sort of in, uh, a city life, mass transit vision of the future has always been this utopian, awesome existence. Yeah, I like walking everywhere. And I like taking the subway everywhere. Mag if it's rail. If it's like past 30 minutes, I'm like, no, you're dead to me. I'm not going out there. Right. Unless it's really important. So I'm like, okay, a unicycle. 
maybe. This is why I actually even clicked on this freaking story because I want to see is this an actual viable solution to go past certain areas. This guy I just feel like you're going to clothesline people with those flailing arms. Yeah, this guy does not look goofy he's at gonna all. He's going to clothesline but someone walking like, down the street. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying he had to figure out his balance, and that's how he did it. And then once he gets the uh, the feel of it, he can just lean forward and lean back. To slow Except it down. like a pebble the size of a skittle could be the end of you. I wonder. I don't know. That's it. That's after he fell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not even if this is possible. If you could find a cool looking unicycle, because I used to watch Ducktales, Gizmo Duck, I thought was pretty cool. He was yeah. on a unicycle. Yeah, he All was. Right. I'll give you that. All right. If I could be Gizmo Duck, maybe it'd be kind of neat. But this just looks stupid. And but why does he think it felt like the future? I mean, I understand he's writing a headline to get clicks, but what the hell does that have anything to do with it? He and he's not even writing it through Manhattan. He's writing it through the park, which the is park cheating as far as oh, what is going on. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. A little <laughs> problem with the device: if you take the seat out, and you turn it on, it tries to self balance to the point where it kind of flails around. Yeah, and to stay clear of it. That's so it's a so it's a self balancing unicycle. Yeah, interesting. You have to do less. I guess that's part of the future aspect. You don't actually have to learn something. You're just riding something. But the idea of being on a motorized transportation system that you can carry around that's kind of futuristic. It really is kind of like a segue because you're essentially not. There's nothing to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Can you hold on in a segue? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's handles there's in the segue. Yeah. There's no handlebars in this uh, contraption. Um, and it really is just like a, a person mover. It's a people mover. Yeah. It's just yeah. like you might, the, the seat apparently is very uncomfortable. So maybe in the future he thinks things suck that way too. Right. But I, I just, I wanted something like this to work. Like I don't want to go, like, I'm not going to learn skateboarding. That's just. Yeah, Longboarding is pretty easy. At like, 35, I should pick, yeah, pick up skateboarding. Yeah, you wouldn't have a problem. You think I could do it? Not skateboarding. Again, longboarding. longboarding. Skateboarding, you will not have success in what about those mini skateboards what are those the ones that are like oh, barely yeah. what are they called? i don't know those? i've seen i've been seeing a lot of people in the city rocking those yeah they're called some there's one brand that's really hot with those i forget what it's called but you yeah. have any idea if that's easier or harder i would imagine the shorter the board the harder it is the longer the easier it is okay good because like i've been on a long board and i and i just know how to like snowboard and i figured out longboarding in like 10 minutes Okay, well, I got something to try out then. Yeah, for sure. Long skateboarding. I'm not going to get a new cycle. The other thing is, the damn thing weighed 26 pounds. You got to lug that thing up and oh, down the subway. That's stupid. How much is it? Yeah, how much I think is it? Like a couple, like uh, $1,800. Oh, so there's literally not one redeeming sort of feature here. <laughs> that would be correct. Okay, all right. Glad you, uh, glad you brought us this story today. Hey, man, I was interested in it. I, look, I want stuff to succeed. I want to be in the freaking future. I like it when stuff works, but this thing just didn't work. Yeah, we, I, you know. But I if, keep, if I didn't tell, if I did not, I felt I felt a duty to explain to people if you think you can ride a unicycle, a motorized one. Yeah. In New York freaking city, it's a stupid idea. It ain't gonna it work. It's stupid. And if you have the guts enough to actually not be on a self balancing one, right? And you are confident in yourself enough to be on a unicycle, then more power to you. But this is not the solution yet. I'll tell you one thing. In about a year, mm -hmm. we're gonna hit that date. From Back to the Future 2. Man, that's okay? so soon. Okay, we're going to hit that date. That's October all over, 21st, all over 2015. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And not all, you know, we'll have our like nostalgia party or whatever. We'll celebrate Marty McFly and Doc and all that junk. But we'll also realize the dreams of our childhood have, we'll, we'll do a lot of reflecting. We'll be like, were they met? Okay, we won't. We don't have flying cars, but we don't, we don't really want. We don't really want them. We don't really want flying cars. I don't think we want. I think we want those kinds of of flying cars. Right, the ones that just take off and land wherever they want. Yeah, exactly. Not <laughs> without ones. anyone dying all the time. Exactly, things that don't look like they were they were put together by with a kit. Yeah. Do, do you feel like like movies that are set in the future now are going to be like set way in the future, like the year twenty? I guess we might have already destroyed ourselves by then, but like 20,000, 20,869. I think that's pretty far. Does Jason I, X take place in that? Uh, the, I'm trying to think the the movie that takes place the furthest in the future that I love is probably Fifth Element. Fifth Element takes place in 25, I want to say. 25, 33 or something like that. I'll when find is, out. When does it take place? I'm finding out, but I'm, I'm, Maybe I'm still obsessed with uh, Jason X, Jason in space. That was 2455. Is Jason X? Mm -hmm. But it's space, so screw it. Who cares? 
well, this guy has been alive or undead, I guess, for what thousands, like hundreds of years. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's not that doesn't bother you at all. That for me, like, I want to see New York City in twenty six thirty eight. Right, like that's like growing up. I always wanted to see, and that's why Fifth Element blew me away so much because when did it come out? Ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. It had a very, maybe not realistic or or sort of like accurate, but how could you know? But it had a very uh, clear and and focused vision of what the future would look. It looked like. pretty awful. It looked very like uh, yeah, it didn't look great. Very very like compartment living, industrial, mm-hmm. yeah. Kind of like living in a shipping container. Kind of and, and same with the uh, Minority Report, even though that movie only takes place like 40 years from now. 2263? 20, yeah, that's, that sounds right. 2263 okay. is Fifth Element. It came out in 97. Yeah, so I don't know, man. All right, that's that's been my my motto these days. The future sucks. It's just, it's like, you know, nothing works, man. The future sucks. That's Spaceballs. Yeah, even, even in the future, the future nothing, nothing works. works. That should be that should be CNET's <laughs> slogan. CNET.com, the future sucks. I don't know. What do you think, Mark? Do you like it? Uh, do you no. think I'm too much of a pessimist? What do you think? Maybe, a little bit. All right. Fair enough. We're things back. Will, things we're, will be fine. Things will be fine, mm-hmm. and we're going to be back tomorrow. That's how you know things will be fine. 866-404-CNET. Give us a call. I know today was a little wacky all over the place, but give us a call and let us know what you think. Shoot us an email, the 404 at CNET.com. Follow us on Twitter at the 404. You can follow Iaz. He's at Iaz, and I'm at Jeff Bacalar. Uh, and then join our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash the 404. Sign up, subscribe, and participate in all the conversations. We're back here tomorrow with a brand new one. Until then, I'm Jeff Aguilar. I'm I as the cop lover actor. (laughs) I'm Mark (laughs) LaSalle. This has been the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. We'll see you tomorrow.